Hi, in this video, I'll be talking about expression vector. So far, we are talking about cloning strategies, several vectors using cloning plasmid, and also the viral plasmids, etc. And in this specific video, we'll be talking about a specific type of plasmid which is used to express proteins in mammalian or in bacterial cells. It is called the expression vector. Now, expression vector could be used for several reasons. It could be used to purify a specific protein, I mean first expressing the protein in a bacteria or in a mammalian cell and followed by purification, then to study protein localization in a cell, also to make recombinant protein or enzymes such as insulin. Now also geneticists could use the expression vector to create dominant negative perturbations in the cells. So expression vectors has a wide variety of usage. So in this video, we'll be talking about the mechanism of act, the mechanism by which protein vector, uh, the expression vector works, and how they are similar to plasmids, and what are the differences between what are the modifications uh, in this expression vector compared to plasmids. So, like any vector, this kind of uh, expression vector also has an antibiotic resistance, which work like a selectable marker. Now, origin of replication, which would allow the uh, vector to multiply and also a multiple cloning region a multiple cloning sites where there would be several restriction enzymes where you can i mean do restriction digestion and allow your gene of interest to be integrated into that region right but one interesting thing is in this particular expression vector you have you have to get the expression vector inside a bacteria yeast or mammalian cell and you expect the protein need protein to be expressed inside them, right? So you need to have appropriate promoter such that the RNA polymers can bind and transcribe and further it could be translated. So anything related to transcription and translation machinery should be present in this vector backbone. Otherwise, the purpose of the vector won't be fulfilled, right? So let's talk about what are the new features or what are the additional features compared to a plasmid. So the expression vector has the inducible promoter by which you can spatiotemporally control the expression from the expression of the gene of interest. You also have the gene of interest definitely. Then a uh, N-terminal tag and this kind of N-terminal or C-terminal tag comes very handy when you want to like purify the protein like affinity purification. So you always have a GSP tag or a His tag to purify the proteins. Sometimes mannose binding protein or other tags allow the protein to be more soluble and thereby easy to purify. Now, if you have a fluorescent marker, then it would be easy to track the protein or the localization of the protein inside a cell, right? Then you have shine Dalgarno sequence, and in a moment we would talk about why it is there. Polyadenylation site and transcription stop sites all are the feature of this expression vector. But wait, wait, wait. It's like an information overload. There are like too much information. Let's break it down one by one. So first, let's talk about an inducible promoter. Now, we know that in case of eukaryotic translation, transcription, you need a promoter region where the RNA polymerase would bind and start transcription, right? So you need a promoter region. And without the promoter region, the transcription cannot be started. So most of the cases, if you want to express the protein in bacteria, a good inducible choice would be lac operon, right? The lac promoter could be a good choice because by default lac operon is off, but inducing we can be, that can be induced by the presence of allolactose or a synthetic variant of allolactose called IPTG. Other systems like Teton Tetov system could be also useful, especially for mammalian cells. Now, if you want more information about lac operon and Teton Tetov system, you can visit my molecular biology playlist and watch the videos on that. Then we talk about shine Dalgarno sequence. Now, let's say our vector is expressed, expressed inside the cell. It has produced their mRNA, but the mRNA, which is produced inside the cell, it needs to bind to the ribosome, right? And the ribosome binding requires the shine Dalgarno sequence, which interacts with a specific 16S rRNA sequence in the ribosomal small subunit which allow the ribosome attachment into the mRNA. So the sign Dalgarno sequence should be also present in that expression vector itself. 
Now, two important sites, transcription stop and polyadenylation site are super important because there are sequences which allow the transcription to be halt and thereby falling off the RNA polymerase in a road dependent or independent manner. But also in case of eukaryotic especially, the polyadenylation is very important. And without the polyadenylation by specific enzymes like CPSF or CT CSTF, these enzymes which trigger polyadenylation, they are very important because without the polyadenylation, the mRNA are unstable and the mRNA would be degraded. So the protein won't be expressed because the mRNA which is produced from the expression vector, it's degraded in a moment. So all these factors are so important in terms of uh, expression vector or all these factors matters when you want to choose the expression, expression vector for your experiment. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.